Welcome back, everybody, to another McFarlane week. I guess that's what's happening. There's so many McFarlane figures. Apparently, I'm a McFarlane collector now. I've always known, but when I walked in here with so many boxes, there was nothing I could do but have to accept what it is. I've entered a 12-step program all by the Todd father. There's nothing I can do except Todd give me more figures. Let's just make them so they're not Batmans anymore. But you know, that last Batman figure is pretty good. Anyway, we are taking a look at the new McFarlane Toys gold label Mandarin Spawn figure. And it's okay. It's not as great as I thought it was going to be. That said, I will pick up the standard release. Oh, you want to know the difference between the standard release and the gold label release. Well, that's basically different sculpt on them. Standard release is not out yet. And the biggest thing is going to be paint. This one's a blue spawn figure. The other one will be a red spawn figure. I personally think the red one looks better, but the blue one doesn't look that bad. Actually, do not mind this, which brings up a very valid point. Todd, if you think that no one is going to buy spawn figures, then why are you making alternate spawn figures and realizing that they're selling out everywhere? Yes, Todd, we will buy your spawn figures. I have bought your Mortal Kombat spawn figure. Jason has bought two of your Mortal Kombat spawn figure. I bought the variant of your Mortal Kombat spawn figure. I am looking at your gold label one, and I will buy your red one. And then if you decide to give us another one, I will probably pick that one up too. But we're going to go ahead and take a closer look at this packaging, and then we're going to take a closer look at the figure. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and go from there. I did not pull everything out of this packaging. As you can see, you can still see the handy dandy little tiny spawn label stand McFarland, whatever. It's the same little tiny piece of plastic that holds up all figures. Don't really think you need it with the spawn figure. And then of course you can see the massive weapons that are hanging out in there. Boy, those things are huge. And I will tell you, they hurt. I want to forewarn people though, the package in here is not great. The way that they have spawn packaged in there, if you try to pull out your spawn figure, this piece right here will fall off. I did have to super glue mine back on, and it was ridiculous. Do not freak out because it is a little peg, but the peg isn't there for it to actually plug in. You will have to super glue that bad boy back in. It was not done very well. Taking a look at the packaging, you can clearly say that they went with all the red. I don't think this is insensitive in any way, but you know, I'm a little on the fence, but you got that little dragon right here. On the side, got a nice picture of the Mandarin Spawn figure right over here where it says Mandarin Spawn. Then, of course, you have the dragon picture, same over here. A little bit of window top, gold label series right there with a picture of the Spawn figure. And then, of course, you've got your UPC. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at those weapons, and then we're going to take a closer look at Spawn. Taking a closer look at these accessories, you've got, of course, your standard spawn right here. You got your little you know, stand, whatever, no big deal. Taking a closer look at these weapons, though, boy, are these big honking blades. Look at that. It's super detailed, really nice. I like the little nicks that they got going throughout here. Got the dragon right here. You got nice sculpting detail. You can tell Todd really cares about his spawn property. Um, if only he would give us more spawn figures, because apparently retailers don't want spawn figures. I'm still going to be salty until you give me spawn figures. Taking a look at the other blades, super nicely done. So you got the spawn logo right in there, looking great. I wish there was a little bit more color to the blues here, like a little, maybe like some white, something additional, just to kind of help bring it out. But ultimately, not too bad, and these aren't that bad. I will say that they are a little pointy right here on the sides. And then, of course, there's this one's actually not that bad, even though it's a really nice plastic, really good, good quality figure. Now we'll take a closer look at Spawn himself, which does look good. I have no tie to the Mandarin Spawn, and yet at the same time, I will always buy a really cool looking figure, which is gonna be in this case. Looks really good, I really like it. And so taking a closer look at the figure, you have the head, very, very nicely detailed. You have blues and silvers going down. A little bit of blue kind of came right here on mine. You don't know if you can actually see it. Going down, you've got the Spawn logo right here on the forehead. Got these little tiny teal balls going throughout all of the figure. And then, of course, you've got the teeth looking really good. Careful with some of the Spawn figures. They are posed a little weird in the packaging as well. So this could be bent if you're not careful. Taking a look at the body. Looks really good. I really like this. I could have used a little bit of shading going around here, but it's not bad, especially for what it is. 
Uh, you got, of course, you got more of those green kind of pearls going throughout the rest of the figure, looking really good. I really like this design of having like an open mouth right here. Then, of course, you've got more of the dragon, silver, greens, more detail, all nicely sculpted throughout. Then, if you course go back up here, this piece, like I said, will come off um, depending on how you open it. Mine fell off twice. I had to go get another one because the first one I got did not pass the shake test, even a little bit. It was horrible. This one's a little better, but it does still have some of the similar problems. Then, of course, going down the arm, you've got a little bit of face right here. Nice little spike going here, going on down. I wish this was a little bit more painted because, of course, you've got so much paint detail up at the front that the arm kind of lacks. Like you got a little bit more detail over here, but kind of the same thing, plain blue. And then there's no paint on the back. You have like this part and then like down here, but then it's just plain blue. Like he put all the paint here. I believe there is a particular YouTuber named Jobby the Hung that tells us that figures are supposed to look nice on the back because they're not a piece of plastic. They're not cardboard. Well, they are plastic, but... Yeah, like, there's just not as much love on the back of this figure as there is on the front of this figure. And then, of course, looking down at the legs, got those nice, different, kind of angry faces going on, very nicely painted. And then, of course, you've got the shin guards here, more. And then, of course, you've got these three-toed feet. Taking a look at articulation, Spawn does okay. Uh, can't really look up or down. He just doesn't have that motion. He does have some side to side, which is really nice. Taking a look at the arm, he can 360 those arms. This one's a little bit harder to get up because of this giant shoulder pad, and the same problem's gonna happen over here. You're gonna have it run into it. There is kind, there is no bicep swivel. But there's a shoulder or elbow swivel because of the ball joint that's right here, and it's that standard McFarland ball joint that you have everywhere. So it can go up. It is kind of a single joint, and I get why he did it. It's because it's a thinner figure, but uh, I'm okay with it. And then, of course, you have the ball joint right here in the wrist, just like anything else, which does go down. It does go back up. And then, of course, if you twist it, you can have it go side to side. There is a bit of bend going forward, but not a whole lot. The sculpt here really impedes the rest of the articulation, and it does have way more back because there's nothing in the back. And then, of course, you've got a lot of movement right over here. Then he can kick, but he really can't kick that far forward. Like, this does get in the way, so you really can't have him kick forward at all. He's got some okay out. That's about it. Double jointed knee isn't going to go all the way to his butt. He's got these little tiny horns right here, which are going to ultimately impede the rest of that. And then this is really loose. Like, it just depends on how you have it. Like, mine's loose, but it's not too bad for where it is. And then, of course, you have the ball joint here, which can't go back that far. It only goes back far, this far because of this. It's not going to go any further. And then, of course, if you were to adjust it, because actually there is no standard ball. It's going to go on a rivet, but there is a bit of pivot, depending on how you angle it, but it's really not going to suffice as pivot. Our new Mandarin Spawn is really hard to judge height-wise. He is almost, I would say he's over nine inches tall to the highest point, which is of course that shoulder pad. I would say he's a little over nine inches tall to the top of his head, but if you go for where I guess would be a standard top of his head, he's a little over eight inches tall. And then of course, here is our new Mandarin Spawn next to the Mortal Kombat seven inch spawn figure that we got from McFarlane as well. And as you can see that Mandarin spawn is taller than his other counterpart over here, but he's also a lot skinnier. So they are gonna look different together. They are gonna look okay on your shelf. If you have a spawn shelf going, that's gonna be great. If you have to do Kickstarter figures, that's cool. You could absolutely like those figures. I personally don't have those figures anymore, but I also don't, haven't ever gotten them. So it doesn't really matter. So if you have your spawn figures and you really like them, then absolutely this is something that you're gonna wanna pick up. The red one does have different parts to it, different sculpts, different paints. So I do think it would be worth it, especially if you like the blue one. But if you're gonna get one over the other, I can't answer that for you since I have never seen the red one in person. But I do think that at least a Mandarin spawn is gonna be great to any spawn collection shelf. All in all, this Mandarin Spawn is okay. Having no connection to the actual figure itself, it's really hard for me to tell you whether or not it's gonna be a good figure for you or not. I have no personal attachment to Mandarin Spawn. I just thought it looked really cool. And of course it was a gold label series. So I did decide to go ahead and pick it up while I was there. 
it was my, I would say it was the second most anticipated figure that I liked out of the Gold Series figures. I will probably say that out of the three series figures I like, I, it's probably on the lowest of the one I like. But at the same time, it's not low because it's a new figure and it's super cool and I like it. So I would say that it's, you know, like go pick one up. I think it's worth it. If you liked this review, feel free to subscribe to our channel, which is Alternate Heads Podcast, or just Alternate Heads, I believe. Uh, feel free to like the video, leave us a comment, interact with us. We need human conversation. 2020 was a really tough year and it's 2021, so let's get to talking. If you like this, though, feel free to turn on that notification bell because we do put out new reviews quite frequently now, as well as we have our own podcast called Alternate Heads Podcast, where we just talk about toys, different subjects, all sorts of cool stuff. So if you go ahead and you like that, feel free. And you can also get notifications about that on our Instagram, which is at Alternate Heads Podcast. Thank you for watching this review. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.